Nobody's listening, right? Hey, Andy. Hello. I'm so, I really am so excited to chat with you for an hour as though no one were listening, but is anyone? Yeah, this is from Christy on Spotify. Maybe a new pet would help with the boredom. <laughs> You've been very bored lately, That's Elizabeth. That's true. And dear Christy on Spotify is suggesting maybe a new pet would help. I want to clarify a few things, first uh-huh. of all. Thank you. But can you leave... I thought Spotify kind of changed and oh, you can't. Okay. I'm gl- I'm so glad you brought this up. I'm so unhappy that I don't have all the answers. The comment, it used to be that you could ask questions on Spotify. They've changed that to comments, which seems awesome because now I think we can respond. I think other people can respond. I am seeing all of them. I am approving all of them. But I'm not seeing them in the app yet. So I got to see where they are for everybody. But people are leaving I them. Also, I also don't know how to, like, when I go to a podcast, I'm not seeing where you can leave a comment. But people are leaving them for us. I wonder if just, like, our app hasn't refreshed or something yet. Maybe. We will find this out. We'll, but keep them coming because I, I love yeah. the idea that you can leave proper comments now. And people are. This was a comment on Spotify. Okay. Yes. That's a great comment. Now here is what's going on. Yeah. Okay. I do want to clarify something. Yeah. Now I know I I used the word, I think, bored. And I'm actually doing much better this week. I've been way busier. But it's not boredom. And it's also not that I like have nothing to do. I actually have plenty of projects that I intend to get to that I'm like not getting to. Mm -hmm. But someone sent me, thank you to the nobody or somebody who sent me this um, Mel, I think her name is Mel Stevens. She's like a life coach type gal. On the gram, on Instagram, on the TikTok, old gram. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was interviewing someone who's an expert. Now, I didn't like check sources, so I have no idea how whatever this is. Yeah. But basically the idea, or there's a graph that this person was talking about of happiness in life. Now, I don't know how they're measuring happiness, and I just did this whole wormhole into the, like, there's a world happiness study done Okay. that ranks countries and level of happiness, and there are five criteria that they look at. One is financial, kind of how much money per person is there. One is like how much social support is there. Mm-hmm. One is how much health care, you know, stuff is there. One is how much freedom do the people there have, blah, blah, blah. So, and typically every <laughs> every time this report comes out, the top five countries are like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Iceland, which is interesting. Yeah. But this person talking to Mel showed this chart that's basically a U. It's a giant you. Uh And it's like over the course of one's life, this is how happiness goes. So like you start out happy Uh and then, you know, puberty hits, it starts to go down and it just like keeps going down until midlife. Okay. 44. Guess where I am? 44. Then it starts to slope upwards because then like your kids move out. So, and then you can, you know, in retirement, kind of be more content or whatever it is. Okay. But the thing that this person said is why it's unhappiness. And it's not even unhappiness. And I think this is what I've been feeling because I actually am very happy. I'm doing great. I feel very content in my life. I feel very fortunate. I have a lot of gratitude for everything. Yeah. It's that when you are at this in this phase of life, there's the least change happening for you. Mm-hmm. So when you're a teenager, your body's changing, you're trying new things, you're like, the world is set up for you to try new things. You're learning things. You're, you're doing learning things. You're activities. challenging yourself. You're feeling like... Everything's new. You're, you're feeling this sense of accomplishment in small and big ways. Then, you know, as you go, now in midlife, you, you know... Typically, for many, many people, they have a spouse, they have uh, kids, they have, they're kind of solidly in their career. Mm -hmm. 
doing the thing that they do well, but probably maybe not like necessarily striving for more Mm -hmm. in their career. Um, Kids are kind of keeping you rooted. Yeah. Your focus is to support your children and like enrich their lives, which is what I'm doing, you know, taking one kid to basketball, one kid to swimming. That's a big part of my life right now, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. However, it's the sameness Mm. that is kind of like this low, um, low frequency drag Mm. that I'm feeling. And I'm just like, I want new shit. (laughs) As my dear friend Terry says in in like working in entertainment, sometimes you just want some new bullshit. (laughs) Mm. Well, you sent me a clip about a Sarah Silverman clip that was something about like not everyone needs to what was it? Something want the same things. And I interpreted it that you, I was like, do you not want a husband anymore? <laughs> do you want to switch that up? No, no. Well, I think that this though, no, the answer is no. I'd be, you're the best thing that's happened in my life. Boring thing though. Maybe right this moment. I'm sorry. You're not using the word boring anymore. It's just, <laughs> you're using um, mundane. Is that where you're, are you, you're same. Things are just same. Well, you are the same husband, but yeah. no. Truly, you, the kind of hope I have of, like, seeing our way out of this is often you and I have these... Seeing our way out of this. (laughs) It's so dark. (laughs) No, but you and I have these heart-to-hearts, and we dream together. We're dreaming about trips we want to take. We're dreaming about, like, new adventures we want to have. You and I often will, in those heart-to-hearts, talk about, like, a new creative project Mm -hmm. we're thinking about or, you know... yeah. Those conversations give me love it a jolt. Gotcha. <laughs> but it does make sense why oftentimes I think the stereotypical midlife crises yeah. look like I'm getting a Lamborghini or I'm having an affair or I'm doing this thing to shake shit up mm. because I just need to feel alive kind of in that way you're right i'm not interested in either of those versions of a midlife crisis a lamborghini or an affair no i but i am interested sarah the sarah silverman quote that resonated for me or clip that was all of this can be found on instagram Mm. which is my go-to source for all of it was hey it was kind of a reminder of You don't have to live everyone else's life. This idea that you have to get married, you have to have kids, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way, just because everyone else is, Mm. like, it's your only life. Do what the fuck you want. Sure. Now, I am living the life I want, but I'm, I am. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change anything. I am ready to take on something new. And the, Spotify writer is not wrong. A new pet would be very exciting to me. Yeah. However, having just just for the first time become pet free, mm-hmm. and um, I for any new listeners, I have severe allergies to dogs, which is so sad. Yeah. And so it would likely be a cat, and we just put down like the best cat yeah. in the whole world. Yeah, I don't really want a new cat right now. Now. I would be open to fostering. However, it's tricky with the kids, especially our daughter. We've I feel like at this age, we've put them through that so many times too. Now that it's like it's get, it's almost a little um, tor- unfair, tortury. Yeah, we we fostered eleven animals in the last five years, and none of them stuck around. Which they're not by supposed design. to. By design. By design. But that's hard for a kid over and over and over again. Yeah. And usually if you foster that one, many animals, let's be honest, one of them kind of... Sticks. Sticks, yeah. Yeah, and I just, you know, I'm not totally ready for that. Even though cats are pretty low maintenance, but we wouldn't know. Here's the thing. If if I could know it was going to be another Ramona, mm. I'd totally be open to it, but... I don't think I'm at the phase where I can handle, like, the kind of shakeup I want in life isn't like having a cat come in who's suddenly spraying all over the house. And you I want to, to spice things up, sort of. I want to spice things up. I think 
Speaking of spicing things up. Oh, yeah. Shout out to this week's sponsor, Dipsy, for uh. supporting Nobody's Listening Right. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, spicy audio stories. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. Get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash NLR. That does spice your life up. You should do you should be a voiceover artist for Dipsy. You have such a good voice. Let's speak on more of that later, maybe, because that <laughs> that does get me excited for some reason. <laughs> but you you know, you have to really go there with it. I don't think I'd have a problem with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyway. No new pets. No new pets right just right yet. Although I did, I fell in love with a dog recently yeah i think i can say our friend or my dear friend june's dog yeah who they recently it was a foster fail uh-huh and it i don't know it definitely sparked something in me that was like oh. i'm really curious because this was a type of dog that i don't think you spend much time around and dog allergies, there's, um, you know, there's the saliva allergy, which is a it's big dander. one. There's dander. I'm curious if that kind of coat, if for some reason you're less allergic to it, because I didn't see you have any issues with that. I know, dog. and I was like up in its grill. So, so I, I'm going to play cards at their house soon. So you're just going to get all over that dog? I think before leaving, I might just get all over that dog. Uh-huh. And it's a, it's like a pit bull mix. It seems to be, yeah. And I don't know what, like, <laughs> this sounds so creepy because it's not our dog. I love the way this dog smells. And, like, it's a sweet, sweet Do you want me to edit that out? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just a sweet, sweet buddy of a dog. And I love to kiss him on his big, big old head. And... um so I'm going to really get up in there for in the in the for the sake of research. I'm saying in quotes. Mm -hmm. But also get to get some sweet puppy love. Yeah. I love it. Anyway. So I think that the, that person's not wrong Christy. at all, Christy. I just feel that's not honestly the shakeup I want. This is the other thing. I'll be perfectly honest. Mm. I think <laughs> everyone might be aware that I haven't worked in a minute, mm. and it's we're we're living on your income, thank God. But LA is a two income town, and so we don't get to plan the same type of trips or the same fun things yeah. that we normally would. And those things really carry me through the year, being like, Looking "Oh, we're to gonna it. go to Ojai. Oh, we're going to Hawaii." You know those things. Mm -hmm. We have the cabin, which is great, but the cabin has also become part of our routine. <laughs> Sure. Didn't see that happening. So that's another part of it is, you know, they say money can't buy happiness, but it can buy really nice trips. Yeah, that's true. So I and I anticipate all of this will change actually potentially very soon. You know, um, things I think are picking up out there in Hollywood land. It also sounds like you might just be. Yeah, you just being on like a new show or something, that might be enough of a switcheroo just in your daily life to like, mm -hmm. you know, end this misery. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember, <laughs> I remember before I got staffed and I had been trying, I have to go back to that time and I really need to be grateful for what I have, proud of myself for what I've accomplished and all that shit. Yeah. But it took so long for me to get my foot in the door in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I really hustled my fucking ass off. Yeah. I feel like I spent all of my hustle energy up on the front end. And I kind of like, it's really fizzled. <laughs> but I remember going to lunch with friends of mine who were in writer's rooms and stuff like that. And being like, and not, I, I, wanted to hear all of their stories i wanted yeah. to hear all about it i wasn't like it wasn't like don't talk about don't complain about your job because yeah. i wish i had it it was like i can't wait to complain about that job mm -hmm. i cannot wait and i'm kind of there right now where i'm like i can't wait to have some you know awkward thing i said in the room and 
come home to you and go, oh, I said this stupid thing. I hope I, you know, all of that. Yeah. So remind me when that happens yeah. to look back on this and go, hey, you got yeah. it. That's, I love that. Yeah. I have a question for you. Hit me. Do you love yourself? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What are you doing? No, no, no. I want to know, what's your relationship with yourself? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, do I love myself? Well, so, and I also want to ask you this question in context of who you were at different points in your life. Okay. Now, I know I'm talking to some, you have this, not that you don't have insecurities, you're human, yeah. but you do have this kind of innate level of confidence mm. that I don't think I have that I've known you since you were 12 mm -hmm. and you've had since then mm -hmm. where you were always kind of your own person and never felt like lesser than or pressure to um, acclimate. What's the word I'm looking for? Like assimilate assimilate or yeah, maybe. In fact, and I think you always just had a comfort in your own skin. Me, yeah, maybe. I think there are times where you know I have very, I have low self esteem, and I'm talking down to myself in my head for sure. But I do think, I think I, for the most part, like myself, love myself. I feel like is a big word. I don't know if I'm like full acceptance of myself. You know, but, but I think I like who I am. But I don't know if, like, I love myself. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure there are days where I feel very solid. Because I think that's what the question you're asking sort of is, like, do you feel solid in your... I don't, I don't know. What well, I asked this <laughs> because on Instagram... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> do you remember Mitra... Um, from Lamel. Oh, hells yeah. She's so wonderful. So yeah. she's on Instagram, nice to Mitra. She's this gorgeous, amazing, like very beautiful person inside and out. Yeah. And she was like my favorite barista forever. In fact, the morning that the morning after Hillary lost, she's the first face I saw outside of yours. Yeah. And we just like started weeping and hugged each other. <laughs> you know, yeah. I have a very I feel very connected to her, which is not surprising. I think I'm one of a million people who, like, went to La Mill when she was working there yeah. because she was so – she's just that sunshiny person. Yeah. Well, she's married, and her husband seems incredible. And she just did this beautiful post in for their two-year anniversary talking about how they met, which was, like, on an app. Mm-hmm. Um, but he lived in London. Whoa. And so he was just in town and they met on an app. Okay. And then they had a long distance relationship. But the way she describes him and and it was such an inspiring post. I mean, I feel like I found this as well, but I don't know if I could have articulated it mm. that early on. But she was saying this came into her life when she was finally in a place where she truly loved herself was completely okay with like just being in her own company and not mm. worrying too much about finding the partner. Yeah. Not to say that you have to be that way. I think that plenty of people who are looking for partners yeah. will find the right partner. But her whole thing was like, don't settle. And she was in a place in her life where she was like, I'm not going to settle. Yeah, and yeah. I think my standards are too high and I'm not changing them. So like, yeah. what's even the point? Yeah. But she met this guy. He's so wonderful and makes her so happy. And they, he really, they really both do seem like those rare people who just seem really ha genuinely happy. And mm. you know, yeah. So, but her talking about that and being like, I, I love myself. I got to this place where I love myself. Had me going. Do I love? <laughs> do I love myself? Yeah. I think I do. Uh huh. And I think a testament to me loving myself is how much I love you like that you love me mm -hmm. I think <laughs> oh yeah I thought you were being just saying as a matter of fact yeah my kids right how I mean I think children love their parents even if they're pieces of shit but 
I feel like the relationship that we've cultivated makes me feel like sometimes, sometimes I doubt myself in parenting and sometimes I doubt myself in marriage. But overall, I think I do love myself. Yeah. But I was like, would I love myself just as is without this external kind of validation that I'm looking for? Mm. And, you know, I don't know. You bring up, see, there's so many layers to how you're defining it, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily how I thought you, the question you were asking, mm -hmm. because part of it was, but, you know, people are different, like being able to spend time by themselves and enjoy that time. Mm -hmm. I think some people are built for that and some aren't. Some might feel like, oh gosh, I feel so lonely. I wish I was with people where there are other people that just like being alone. Yeah. I'm very comfortable being by myself. Me too. In fact, I need it mm -hmm. sometimes, you know. The days that like are the times where the kids are at school. Yeah. And I know you're like last week you went to lunch. Even I love obviously being with you also, but like just knowing that I had a few hours at home and I didn't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I probably watched some depressing documentary. Yeah. But knowing like that you weren't going to come in or whatever. Just... Use the bathroom and turn the tushy on. <laughs> yes. So you have to hear that. I was so, I was like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. I need that to like recharge every once in a while. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's for me more to do with just how you perceive yourself and how you're talking to yourself internally. Mm -hmm. You know? I can beat myself up mm -hmm. over or feel insecure quite often. Mm -hmm. But then also, and there's times where I don't feel that way at all. I have felt lately mm -hmm. getting more confident almost in my older age in a way that I don't think I would have suspected. I think I've always felt scared of getting older, especially in my career where I feel like the older you are, the less cool you are. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really like worried about that anymore for some reason. In some ways feel more confident and I say in quotes, like cooler than I used to be in some ways. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I also, I also wonder if, Look, you and I are doing these creative careers that's objectively kind of cool. As our niece in Idaho said, like, we don't seem as cool as what we do sounds. Um, <laughs> exactly. But She wishes we were cooler. <laughs> we're supposed to be cooler than we exactly. are. Exactly. Yeah. But... Big shout out to this week's partner, Dipsy. Yes. Summer is here. Time to pack your bag with sunscreen, your emotional support water bottle, and that steamy beach read, maybe? But yes. wait. This year, there's a new kind of essential that's right at your fingertips. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short and spicy audio stories. So maybe toss out that novel and throw the earbuds in and listen to a great story when you're at the beach or maybe when your husband is out of town like I was. Yes, I had a lot of fun with the Dipsy app. I really love it. And it's a kind of a new experience for me. And it's very enjoyable. And it is right at your fingertips. Whoa. Now, you were struck, I feel, by the performances. Yes. And so I feel honored that earlier in this episode, you said I could maybe be a voice actor. You could. So they get into it on the this, like they're really there for you. Do you know what I love about Tipsy Please. also, which is fun? Although I really like all of the story leading up. I want to know the emotional connections and everything. But where things start to get hot, yeah, there's a little flame on the like audio bar of where you're getting to. So if you're impatient or whatever, you're going to just jump right there. But I think that... You know, the actor is like, it's, it sounds very authentic. That sounds steamy. <laughs> it is. Now, give an example of themes in some of the ones you've checked out. Because I have a list here and I'm like, whoa, what's a theme of maybe one well, that you Well, I you've... think there is something for everyone. I, you know, I'm just dipping my toe in this well. And I did the old professor, um, you know, student who just argued her thesis. And Classic. Like, 
It's wonderful. <laughs> There's stuff for um, people that like enemies to lovers stories, chance encounters, slow burns, a friend becomes more. It feels like whatever you're into, Dipsy has a spicy audio story just for you. So for our listeners of this show, we got an offer for you. Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash NLR. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash N-L-R. Dipsy stories.com slash N-L-R. Um, I do think also, look, we started podcasting in 2010. Mm-hmm. No one knew what this was. We barely knew what it was. Yeah. We couldn't have guessed what it would turn into. Mm-hmm. This job I do, I didn't know existed as a child. My whole point of this is saying there's something that gives me confidence is knowing, and, and I'm, I think this year, has this has been a lesson I have truly absorbed, knowing that you don't know how it's going to go. Yeah. And so you can be like, I feel like there's a confidence linked to, Oh, I'm setting out to do this thing. Okay, I'm going to climb the corporate ladder and I'm going to become a CEO and I know all of the steps and I can see it in front of me versus I think the way we're living our lives, which is we don't really know where the wind is going to blow us. We have no idea. Mm -hmm. And so I feel I don't feel bad about myself if I haven't achieved a specific thing the way I think probably six years ago, you know, the the perfect example is I've always wanted to have my own show. Mm-hmm. That still, I hope, happens and yeah. could. But if it doesn't happen, I'm not taking that to mean, like, I'm not worthy, I'm not cool, I'm lesser than. I'm taking it to mean, like, life took me in a different direction. Right. And that's totally right. fine. Right. Yeah, that resonates with me, too. So I, in that I sense, I feel have... more confident, I think, as well. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, maybe that's a good, I think that's a great point. I feel, I have a lot of things career-wise that I used to have a bigger chip on my shoulder than I do now of wishing I would have accomplished sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But yeah, you make a great point with that It's interesting the timeline thing. And I think the timing of it is more linked to your industry. Mm -hmm. And it would be linked to like an industry for athletes or models often or you know of course there are outliers who kind of break barriers and olympics we've been watching yes any sports thing but i don't really have the like because that has been through your career a thing like if you found a producer songwriter who didn't like have their big moment until they were in their late 40s you'd tell me about it like isn't that cool it's kind of gives you hope yeah 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 whereas for me that hasn't really been as much of a thing because obviously old white dudes in their 60s are crushing (laughs) it it. (laughs) um okay now another kind of serious question and then we can move on to whatever you know toilet (laughs) story you want to (laughs) tell so we have been watching the simone biles documentary with our kids oh yeah and have had to kind of fast forward through some of the the um, sexual assault, the, yeah. Dr. Nasser. Nasser, yeah, that piece of shit. S- stuff. Now, they were asking about, like, what is abuse yeah. and things like that. And I started to describe it. And you, I think, rightfully were like, and I think that's as far as we need to get. Cause yeah, I, I thought that was a good. I was talking about verbal abuse and physical, physical abuse, abuse. And then what was coming next was sexual. And you kind of put the kibosh. Well, Teddy and I went on a walk mm-hmm. and she had seen in the like previews yeah sexual abuse yes and so she was like what is that yeah and i don't need to get into our private conversation but i think i handled it okay yeah but i was talking about this is really interesting the difference between trusting your gut Mm -hmm. and also being able to remind yourself that your thoughts are not always telling the truth Yes. In the sense of, let's say you have a fear of, for me, flying. Mm -hmm. 
my thoughts are always catastrophizing. Like if I get on this plane, it's the one that's going down. If they're yeah. Da, da. yeah. Now I could very easily mix those thoughts up with my instinct, like trust your gut. I know. Yeah. And how do you differentiate, especially when talking to a child? Yeah. And I often find that the advice you give to your child is something that it's a really great way to reframe things for yourself. Yeah. And I was like, because I I very often tell our kids, you know, if you have a that uh-oh feeling or yeah. like don't want to hug someone or you're around someone and they give you this like, eh, feeling, yeah. trust that. Right. In the same breath, <laughs> if you're starting to be scared, you know, if if a kid is starting to be scared at every turn or doesn't want to be in situations, right? I don't know, like, how do you temper that? Yeah. Well, I, in, it's interesting you bring this up. In some ways, when I looked over at you when we were talking about abuse and the difference between verbal and physical, and then I could see you about to tiptoe into there. Mm -hmm. One, I didn't think it was quite age appropriate. Two, I feel like we've already empowered our kids enough with enough, enough understanding of, we've empowered them to like tell us if anything bad happens in that department. Well, and we've been very, it's not just if anything bad. I mean, I think... One of the failures of the generations before us, yeah. not, you know, they did the best they could, but was first of all understanding who is doing the abuse. Yeah. Like, it's not a boogeyman. Usually it's a trusted uncle, family friend, male relative, teacher, teacher, coach. Yeah. The other thing that this person needs to, you know, groom and abuse is. Yeah. Trust with the pers- the child, and access. time time alone. Yeah, access. Access. Yep. And so we intentionally have set up our lives in a way that avoids that as much as we can. Now, of course, our kids go to school. They go to camp. Like, yep. So the other ways we have empowered them is by talking, I think, in age-appropriate ways. Like right. if an adult ever wanted you to keep a secret from us. Right. You can tell us you won't get in trouble, like, you know, or you should tell us, like, you won't get in trouble if an adult ever wants to touch you in your private parts or make you uncomfortable. And another thing we've done, which I don't really know why this is, but we've, um, from a very young age, taught our kids the accurate words, penis, vagina. Well, it's actually vulva, but... (laughs) As accurate as they yeah. need to be. But we learned, yeah, we learned that in like a class during very young. I think it's because predators try to make it kind of a game, especially with, unfortunately, really little kids. Mm. So they'll be like, wee wee and pee pee and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And I think a child who is using yeah. the accurate words right. is a is a red light for a predator. Yeah. So but go ahead, this sorry. is just all to say that I wasn't making you stop the conversation. I know, I know. Because I didn't want them to know about that. I feel like they know enough to be able to communicate with us if something bad happened at this point in their lives, right? I was kind of more worried about just like the age appropriateness of it and also just the like, are they at an age to have this baggage to then be worried about, to have the anxiety about that stuff which I feel like you're speaking to sort of now, just yeah. in, in more general terms. Because well, it's a tricky thing to then, to balance. Yeah, I'll that. be honest. I mean, I think that it is tricky to navigate. And especially, I think around this age, some anxieties start creeping in. Sure. And rightfully so. I mean, don't even get me started about, like, I don't want our kids to feel anxiety around gun violence. Mm-hmm. But schools do lockdown drills and like how could you not feel anxiety about that like and our kids have lived through a pandemic and all of this stuff so yeah you're right i don't want to pile on an anxiety about it i also don't want their understanding about sex and sexuality to be like weighted towards fear or negativity versus like pleasure and connection yeah so 
I think I handled it on this walk pretty well, yeah. I hope. <laughs> and But I also was kind of talking about like the difference between, you know, if a kid is scared to go to school and doesn't want to go to school because the, the lockdown drill scared them and they think every day they're going to school, uh, right. is, there's going to be a shooting. Mm -hmm. And those are th intrusive thoughts that I think to them can feel like a gut instinct. Yeah. But when it's over and over and proved wrong time right. and time again, I don't know. It's a really no, challenging. That line is super interesting in yeah. how to navigate that and how to impart some knowledge in that way too. And there's also ways you and me probably both have some baggage that we wish we didn't have. Let's use your flying anxiety, for oh, example. Oh, it's like, heavens what? Okay, yes. Where from your experience with flying, you probably wish you didn't have that yes. baggage where you might want to impart some of that knowledge onto your children, right? Yeah. Like, you're going to be sort of bummed if both of our kids have a huge fear of flying, right? Well, yeah, and I I mean, but, but, yes. But just like, so it's almost like you're getting out ahead of some of those things. I think that's just a natural instinct for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a double-edged sword because on the one hand, I probably gave them that fear. And on the other hand, I understand it. Like, yeah, I, you know, get where they're coming from. I had a huge... <laughs> such a fear of water and swimming growing up yeah more so than anyone else and it was due to a, a particular experience i had but not i guess it was related to my reality but in many ways it kept me from doing so many things Aww. it caused me so much anxiety camp i would get oh, wow. like I don't know if my mom would lie and say I had doctor's notes that, that said I couldn't. Like, I would oh, sit Andy, out those. You were already the tiny guy. Yeah. And I would, <laughs> it would get to a point where I couldn't do it anymore. So Aww. I would get like notes and stuff. This is at like sleepaway camp? I never did sleep, sleepaway camp. You didn't? No. Really? Really. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I assumed you, like every other born and bred Missouri kid, yeah. You know, you avoided getting butt rot, though. I believe that. Because to be true. butt rot was, you I know, think. I went camp. Where did I go to camp? And um, I also did like a week at Odd Homestead, which I think they shut down after our class did it mm. because it was <laughs> really wild. It was like digging your own, you know, latrines. I've done that. Well, for a bunch of spoiled <laughs> brat. Yeah. Private school kids, it did not go well. But I, I kind of enjoyed it. I always enjoy that aspect of it. But, you know, I think it was in the Ozarks. Um, Maybe. In Lesterville, Missouri. Hmm. And uh, the, the like, ponds and rivers and stuff like that. It was so much fun to swim in. But there was this thing that happened. And it wasn't until, like, I was an adult that I realized not everyone had butt rot. Like, I would mm, I would bring up butt very, rot. Like, camp, everyone camp got. And also doing float trips, which in Missouri meant. Canoeing. No. We've <laughs> had this argument before. This is wrong. We've but you're had wrong. this argument before. But you're wrong. And you're wrong. No. A float trip. Okay, in a Missouri. A flow trip in Missouri. Is canoeing and or maybe I want all rafting. of our Missouri. It is not inner tubing in Missouri. It is. I want all of our Missouri nobodies to pipe in here. Come leave a comment. It is you tie a bunch of inner tubes and they're like the big rugged inner tubes. They're, not, they're inner tubes for like tractor tires. I'm familiar with those. Yeah. And you tie them all together and you all get on there and you put in like dotted around them a cooler in the middle of some of them with Bud Lights and stuff. See, you weren't even there in your teens. I'm going to go as far as know. you're... I, I know. We've had this argument and people have chimed in before. That's not what a float trip is in Missouri. No. Okay. Well, in Mis the Missouri I lived in that you didn't, by the way, as a teenager... I grew up doing float trips almost every weekend in the summer. In Idaho. No, in Missouri. We didn't do any float trips in Idaho. I never went canoeing or rafting once. Well, uh, that's parents... not true. But but canoeing float trips 
almost every weekend a float in Missouri. Trip? No, a float trip is you're floating. You're not canoeing and paddling. You're I just can't literally wait. Leave a floating. comment on and Instagram then, or on Spotify or YouTube, <laughs> wherever you want. And the price you have to be from Missouri. The price you pay is the worst sunburn you could possibly imagine. You're also like dehydrated and drinking, unfortunately. Underage drinking was pretty common. And butt rot. And so I, my first butt rot was at, because, and you come back and what is butt rot? Well, don't. Weren't we having like a really nice conversation before this? <laughs> well, it's, You're saying butt rot's related to the inner tubes now? Well, it's, it's the waters of Missouri, maybe. I don't know. But it's a rash you get on your ass and like it's really hard to treat. And I just kind of had it on and off basically through the summers of um, living there and going on float trips and going to camp and stuff like that. But I wasn't alone. Trust that. Like so many people had butt rot. And then do you want to know the other thing that's interesting? Not many ladies, though, right? Yeah. Do you feel like you were kind of alone? No, no. In well, being a I don't. Woman with butt rot. I don't think I talked about it a lot, but and the doctor didn't say she has butt rot. I don't know what it actually was. Do you think it was fungal? I do think it might have been fungal. So then, um, the other thing was so gross. Do you want to know another thing that's interesting? Is it gross? No. Okay. I think it's interesting, but mm -hmm. it does have to do with a body. Well, you know I have cold urticaria, <laughs> which is an allergy to cold. Okay. So basically I realized it in my very early 20s, late teens, that walking across, I was at Miami University in Ohio, walking across campus, snowy, cold day. I get back to my room and my face and neck is covered in hives. I mean, I look like a lizard. And no, you didn't. <laughs> you had hives. You didn't look like a lizard. Okay, and you're allergic to cold. We've been here. Okay. Okay. Is it, what? But my friend Sarah uh -huh. from St. Louis. Okay. Um, who lives here now? She, I like posted, or I don't remember. I brought up cold urticaria publicly at some point. Mm -hmm. She was like, I have urticaria. And she said, do you know that like all of these, like these twins I went to camp with have cold urticaria? There, there's like, seems to be a high percentage of my peers in St. Louis who have cold urticaria. And you think they all went to this one camp maybe? Maybe. Now that's something worth looking into. <laughs> I thought this was a thread going absolutely nowhere. But if Isn't you could wild? uncover some sort of link between the sick butt rot you had, like <laughs> chemicals, gave were you being butt rot and then colder to carry out. into this. I wonder if that camp's still there. We might have to bleep out the camp name. Yeah, like <laughs> was dumping. Yeah, well, you know, chemicals that. into the water right by the camp. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, camp, that camp's still there. We might want to. Oh, that's fine. It, it, listen, camp, you get butt rot. No, honey, honey, we can't, we can't. Defame them? Defame Saying them. a summer camp gives you butt rot? <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Come at me. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I had, it does. Interest me that you didn't go to camp because we aren't really sending our kids to sleepaway camp mm -hmm. for the reasons we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And also, you know, I didn't go I to think a sleepaway camp for the same. We didn't have the money like you. I didn't get to do cotillion fancy <laughs> dance stuff because that you cost money. You were cotillion? No. You never went to cotillion? No, I didn't get to do it. <laughs> Did you ever go to Children's Hospital night at Six Flags? No, another <laughs> fucking thing I didn't get to do. I didn't have like. That was. The, that was like, I also didn't, by the way, my friends would take me. My okay. parents didn't buy me tickets. But just for, that was such a magical night. Okay. You'd go to Six Flags. The tickets were ridiculously expensive. So luckily my rich friends would take me. You would get to ride everything, no lines. Yeah, there weren't many people. All of the food was free. No, you, could you might eat be making, I, you might be making stuff up cake. now. No, it was. It was like... 
You just walk up and go, I want like a slushy and a funnel cake. Maybe. And they're like, here. It was glorious. You would have loved it. <laughs> well, I didn't get those type of opportunities as a kid. So, you know, you never went to summer camp. I went to a day camp. Well, camp <laughs> was so much fun. And I, I, I don't think that, I think that the butt rot problem has probably been taken care of. And I'm sure. Not if still dumping those chemicals into the water right there. Oh my God. Andy, we're going to get sued. We're going to get Came sued. after us. We'd be so fucked. We would be fucked. <laughs> yeah. We would be so fucked. Like they could bury us. Let's talk about well, that. Well, they could kill us for sure. <laughs> they could kill us. Like, <laughs> definitely had people killed. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, now we do have to bleep now some of this. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but they would kill us a painful death of, like, draining our nope. finances. No, and, like, no, 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 no. They well, have a hit. They could do that, but I think they could also, like... Just have someone come in and... Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, okay. What were we talking about? Okay. Well, you never... To to go back to this, your gut instinct versus your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Do you have any tips of, like, where you find that line? Oh, where things are an anxiety versus an intrusive thought, almost? Well, no. Are, I think those are the same, an intrusive thought and anxiety versus a gut, your gut telling you the truth, which is this this person or the situation is no good versus an intrusive thought. I, it's it's almost like a gut thing of knowing the line. There are times. <laughs> so I'm so not helpful. I know, but there are times where maybe it's also the loudness. There are times where I'm getting a loud, loud signal. I mentioned probably on here before there was a time I was in Target with the kid. This is such a good example, actually. I was in Target with the kids and walking around the store. And it was like all of a sudden my entire being was like, leave this store now. And I left our cart and was like, kids, we got to go. Wow. Now. Now, by the way, nothing happened. Right. I didn't hear of anything happening. Fast forward two years, maybe two years, a year to two years, I tried to take our kids to that Target and they were like freaking out, didn't want to go to that Target. But I was like, we got to because we need this stuff. We're right here. And I had a moment of, am I going to push them to go into this or am I going to honor their fear? Right. I did not (laughs) honor the fear because I thought, that their fear is directly linked, linked to, to that mine. feeling I had that one time. And I know right now that us going to this target is not the same as that feeling. And maybe we'll walk in this target and I'll have that feeling again. And But I didn't want to reinforce their fear yes. because of mine. But it was a weird – I had to make the choice. Yeah. But uh, – My intrusive – the tricky thing is uh, in talking to our kid I was kind of like sometimes your thoughts of anxiety and stuff it's almost like they're crying wolf Mm -hmm. so it's hard to tell when it's like the real thing it's very hard and especially you know many many of my intrusive thoughts have to do with um, you and the kids dying like totally I constantly think you know when you take them anywhere away Mm -hmm. from the house and I'm at the house I'm like I constantly think about that. Or if I'm traveling alone yeah. and you, I, you know, every time I say goodbye, I'm like, this is the last goodbye in right, my mind. Right, right. But I've done that enough times that I can remind myself, you've done this thousands of times now and never once has it ended yes. the way you're telling yourself it has. Right. So, you know, but, you know. The gut thing has to be, that's why it has to be loud for me to listen to it. Mm-hmm. I have some, I definitely have some OCD tendencies Mm -hmm. that I think have actually been alleviated so much since um, learning about ADHD and the medication I take for ADHD. Mm -hmm. So it's not as big of a thing, but in the past it was much more of a big thing where I could also 
so quickly attach like maybe a little gut feeling to oh shit to spiral out about it Mm -hmm. and have intrusive thoughts so i kind of have a history of knowing that a lot of those things don't come true so i kind of keep things in check for that reason too because this stuff can get away from you and i feel terrible for people where it gets away from you agoraphobic and i mean there are plenty of situations where you're like I relate to how they got there. You know, if you are thinking every thought you have yeah. is a gut instinct, yeah. then it's scary times. Yeah, I have comp- a lot of compassion for people knowing that what they're feeling f- is such a real feeling. You know, I'm scared of going to XYZ every time. Mm-hmm. They're really fucking scared to go to XYZ every time. It's yeah. not like a hypothetical they're feeling that fear right you're it's in your body yeah which that's tough stuff (sighs) this brings me to robots fuck yeah it does why i wanted to ask you i was listening to this podcast which i'm really liking it's i think it's just called the intermediate french podcast Mm -hmm. but um his name is hugo and he talks about different things he finds interesting yeah which i love because i will say um a lot of the French podcasts is all, it's either just like all politics, which maybe you would like. And like, it's all, I don't know, boring shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> he just talks about random shit that he's interested in and in a very clear way for intermediate French learners, mm-hmm. I guess. And one of the things he was talking about were robots. And he's like, you might think of robots being what you see in science fiction films, but they're there's this new generation of robots I find so interesting and talking about agoraphobics or Mm -hmm. people dealing with anxiety. There are personal robots being created who basically have the AI to read human emotion Mm. and respond accordingly. Yeah. And it can be really helpful in some ways, for example, for people who have disabilities um, to have a robot there with them who can read the signals to look out for if there's an issue and also has the ability to contact like you know yeah or if someone has epilepsy or something like that if a robot can there are robots being developed for kids who have like nonverbal autism Mm -hmm. where you know if the the robot can kind of work with the child in terms of reading human emotions and yeah. over and over again interacting in a way that like a parent just doesn't have the bandwidth to do. Yeah. Now, that's complicated because a huge part of autism is, you know, needing real human <laughs> like connection and support, so it's not a it's not a like cure all for it and not you know what I mean, not cure all. And you know, I'm sticking myself in a hole, but autism, which is neurodivergence and can create challenges for people, but also we celebrate, you know, neurodiversity. Okay. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. Okay. Then on top of that, um, so then there are robots for people who are just lonely. Yeah. You know, which also raises some questions, though, like how satisfying can a robot be? But it turns out remember when pretty we, satisfying. Remember when we were talking about um, fucking digital dream labs and the robot and you found the letter from the son of the like 80 year old yes. man that loved his robot? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they sell at the drugstore like CVS fake cats in the pharmacy section they're like a hundred dollar little robot cats for i think they're for like older people maybe no yeah you've never seen those i love that well i do know that in some nursing homes for people who have severe dementia or alzheimer's they the there are programs where they have baby dolls Mm. and the especially for women I think they like see them as real babies and it gives them purpose to take uh, care of women, them. Because men aren't stupid enough to think they're real. <laughs> Whoa. 
Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Only a dumb broad would think that fake baby's a real Andy. baby. Andy. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, what? Because men don't aren't like loving enough to care for a baby. No, Instead, no, no. Instead, you turned no. it into like shaming. First of all, shaming all women for being dumb. Second of all, <laughs> <laughs> like older women with dementia. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Take a look at what you're doing. Oh, take a look. That's bad. That's bad. bad. That's bad. Anyway, but um, they think they're real. <laughs> Of course. No, but it's... What is that? I mean, I'm, no, no, no. Not what is that, but I'm like, is... How do they nav... Whoever's hand... How do they navigate this in a good way? Like, the place, the people giving them the babe. What, how is this what done? do you mean? What's the downside? What do you mean? I don't know. They're like, oh, this baby's here. I mean, I think these are people who are, have, are in end stages, feel, you know... So in their minds, it's like there's now this baby to care for. And when they don't, nothing, there's there's no repercussions. Like if they forget to feed the baby or whatever it is, you know, they're just like caring for the baby. Do you remember, did your high school, probably not because you all were busy like smoking pot and snowboarding, but mm -hmm. do a like week where you have a baby to care no, for. No, and I don't, if you're going <laughs> to tell me you did that at your high school, no, I'm not going to believe it. Okay. I don't think we did. But okay. You didn't. You look. You're trying to create this memory <laughs> of like from something you've seen, like an episode of Parenthood or something, or from Love Island. I know, but I remember. Oh yeah, it is Love Island. <laughs> but I remember that was a thing back in our day. Give yeah. me that. Riddle me that. That no, it, it wasn't. No, you've only for seen other this high on schools. No. No, you've yes, only seen was. this on TV. Okay. You've only seen this people, on TV. The people who are weighing in on the float trip thing, will you also weigh in on this? Again, was you have it, to be from Missouri. Was it not at like Ledoux Junior High School or high, high school? Was there a thing where you would have a baby for a week and take care of it? At the very least, give me that there were Tamagotchis. <laughs> <laughs> that of you had to keep alive. Of course, there were it's so different. Hey, I want to go on the record saying I have a lot of compassion for people with dementia, <laughs> and I've had it's I've experienced some of it in my family too. So I didn't want I don't want to think I don't want people to think I was being dis the way you were di dismissive. No, I was just being dismissive to women, not to <laughs> women with dementia. I want to make that line completely clear. Oh my god, you're so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> okay, so. Um, and you know what? Since we're here, <laughs> I love women. <laughs> don't get to just say it. How great of you a fucking, to, how how great of an argument is that? Hey, but I love women. <laughs> it's like I was watching this Italian docu series, by the way, where this was unbelievable. Okay, it's like I think it, it's Tara something horrific murder of course it, if you just need to make a list of you have watched a staggering amount of these in the last month okay horrific murder in italy uh -huh. um yara was her name this young gymnast who is it was horrible well they couldn't solve the crime for a while and then they used dna to figure it out they think although this guy maintains that there were all these issues at trial. It's really interesting. Similar to like... <laughs> you know, similar... often use of these documentaries, you always go, it's really interesting. <laughs> well, I mean... That should be the name of your list. It's really interesting in all these horrendous documentaries. Obviously, it's horrific. This is the interesting part is we think DNA is like the end-all be-all of like, oh, if there's DNA, that's it, case closed. Mm-hmm. Which, it is a very strong <laughs> piece of evidence, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Hang on. I just want to say this. This month's, I, I, I want to talk about it on our Patreon episode because it's more private. But I did go to a crime lab recently that's all about DNA testing. That and I want to talk true. a lot about that. So that will be August's Patreon. Okay. Um, Patreon. You went to a crime lab. Can I tease it? Because 
I haven't found, you started telling me that you got to test blood and semen. And I said, <laughs> whoa, whoa, <laughs> save it for the podcast, please. Yes. So that's, So you're saving that for Patreon? Yes. Okay. So that's patreon.com slash nobody's listening, right? I kind of forgot about all this. So this, is this influencing what you're saying right now about DNA or no? Well, kind of. It's very interesting. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. DNA is not infallible. Okay. And in this case, there were all of these, it pointed to this one man who did it, but he's claiming he was set up and framed. Yeah. And it's kind of like the staircase where you're like, I don't really believe you, but I also do think that you got a bad trial. Okay. He's in life in prison, but like they wouldn't let them retest the DNA evidence. He begged the prosecuting attorney over and over, please retest, please retest. The prosecuting attorney intentionally ruined the rest of the DNA so they can't even retest it anymore. That seems like a crime. Well, she's being investigated and on trial for doing that. Okay. So all of these things are playing a part. But what is true about his DNA is the way they got to him was not like, oh, it's this guy, we have his DNA. It was through like his father and his mother's DNA, you know, being... It was first his father. So we find out that basically during the course of this trial, this guy finds out this is the guy who's on trial for doing this murder. His dad is not his dad. So wouldn't his DNA be – I feel like we're kind of getting in the weeds here. No, no. Forget about (laughs) whose DNA – you don't need to do the, like, DNA chart. Just know that because of them testing the DNA – They had to come in from the outside in to get to him. Okay. They discovered that he discovered that his dad is not who he thought his dad was. Mm -hmm. His siblings' fathers are not who they thought their fathers were. So the his mother, who was married to this father, that father didn't biologically make any of the three children. Got it. So the mother was with three different other guys during their marriage. Who had different dads. Or, yeah, the children all had a different dad. Yes. So they're all learning this yeah. because of this trial, mm-hmm. which is kind of mind-blowing. But what is amazing, and this is what I'm bringing your whole I love women thing. Yeah. This mom became this, like, national s- star of the media because she's being interviewed over and over. Everyone's going. So, you know, the suspect's father did you know him and she's like no i mean barely i knew him yes he gave me a ride home for two years straight like all of these things are coming out yeah she has maintained from the jump that she never had an affair like she is just doing the cisco it wasn't me you know is that cisco it wasn't shaggy. me shaggy yeah. like and i kind of admire that she's Going on all of these national... kind of... Admi- well, never change your story. Never change your... Like, <laughs> truly. She's going on all these national interviews and newses and um, talk shows and stuff like that. And everyone's like, hey, <laughs> lady, mm. now all of this other stuff has come out. Like, there are all these facts pointing to this. Yeah. And she's maintaining... No, I don't know. It's a fluke. That's crazy. Well. Isn't that interesting? Inter- <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> okay, well, All this right, well, is we fun. Should, yeah, this. Good night. Good night.